Tonight on Missing Persons Unit... If he's walking out this way, it's a fair hike. ...the disappearance of David Hall. Virtually like a desert once you get past this creek. After three weeks of scouring the outback, there's now a glimmer of hope. Could be anywhere now. Yeah. yeah. And the four-year-old mystery of missing student Neve May. We feared immediately that she was dead. Will this new search finally uncover the truth? I'm hopeful that we will find her. Plus, the bizarre disappearance of Kevin O'Connor. We believe he's left without shoes. He left home eight days ago and no one's seen him since. People do come down here and ways of ending their life, unfortunately. It's the start of another busy week for the officers at the Missing Persons Unit. Well, we've all got a busy day today. There's 12 new cases on the list. Uh, Inspector Taylor, there's been some good news in the case of David Hawes. We've uh, had a breakthrough. It looks like our, our media strategy might have been successful. Excellent. In the investigation of 41-year-old David Hawes, he's been missing for three weeks in the desert and feared dead. But it looks like a happy ending to this case. Mandy, here's an interesting one for you. It's a man from Penrith. Uh, he's been reported by his wife. He's been missing for more than one week. Senior Constable Mandy Gale is assigned the urgent case of 54-year-old Kevin O'Connor, now missing for eight days. And he's got um, some serious medical conditions. Inspector Taylor, I uh, believe you received a call from Tumut Police on the case of Neve May. Police analysts have identified a new search site that wasn't in the original search pattern, so uh, the local police are going to get another search underway and hopefully we'll have some news uh, for the family. Great. That's it for today. Everyone have a great day. The case of missing schoolgirl Neve May is one of over 400 unsolved cases on file. Cases like this can remain active for decades. A desperate appeal today from the parents of a missing 18-year-old Armadale woman. Inspector Adam Taylor is reviewing file footage on Neve's case. Because she hasn't been heard from in nearly three weeks. And now, suddenly, four years after Neve disappeared, there's new information, a new search and new hope for her family. Any tiny little thing that people have seen that may help us or the police, we would just love to know what happened. Neve was uh, picking apples down near Batlow in the Snowy Mountains um, back in 2002 and was expected to go home for Easter and uh, didn't arrive. She was due to arrive at um, uh, 7.13 according to the train timetable. But Neve, or Neam to her friends, never caught her train and no one has seen her since. We feared immediately that she was dead. Today's search, based on new police evidence, will take place in an area near where Neve was last seen alive. As Neve's mum and dad wait for the police search to begin, they walk the trails in the forest where Neve is thought to have spent her last hours. We really are interested in the possessions That's because right. If you get the possessions, you're likely to find me. Yes. This is a walk no parent should ever have to take. Jump in a cab. You got the file? Yep. Back at the missing persons unit, it's shaping up to be a busy day for Adam. He and Sergeant Mark Samways are off to Mildura to follow up on the amazing development in the case of missing Broken Hill man, David Hawes. Last week, he's a loner. we reported 41-year-old David Hawes' disappearance. Is there a difference there? He hadn't been yeah. seen well, for two how's weeks. His, how's his state of mind? Is he, was he all right well, he last week? He was really down. Well, there were grave concerns for his welfare. It's a bit of a mystery, but it's out of character. So Adam Taylor and Mark Samways went to Broken Hill to join the search. Our missing person is David Andrew Hawes. But when they arrived, they received devastating news. The mother of uh, the missing person has passed away. Oh, no. David's grieving mum has died 
from a broken heart. It's, it's not a real good situation. And a massive search in the desert has failed to find any trace of David. If he is out here, we may well be uh, looking for, for remains. The best bet was that he'd hitched a ride out of town. He could have bummed a ride to Madura and could be anywhere now. Now, four weeks after his disappearance, the missing persons unit has received some great news. We're now at a rural location several hundred kilometres from Broken Hill. And we have information that David is uh, safe and well and uh, working on a property. So we've flown in today and we'd uh, like to speak to David and just ascertain that he is safe and well and just uh, see what he has to say about the circumstances surrounding his disappearance. Following a statewide police media campaign to find David Hawes, a farmer who saw David's picture in his local paper called the missing persons unit to tell them that a man who looked like David was working on his farm. Gentlemen, hey, I introduce David, to you, you David Hawes. Adam Taylor, David. Mark Samway. How are you? Pleased to meet you. See how you're doing? I'm fine. That's good. You happy. Look, fine. You look well, we're happy. <laughs> um, you know, just, I'm fine where I am. It's... You're probably wondering what all the commotion was about. Basically, yeah. Like we um, say to people, it's not a crime to go missing. And all, all our involvement was to make sure that you're alive and well. It's not a uh, crime to go missing. No, that's why but what David sees as commotion was over 40 police who spent weeks looking for him and it could all have been avoided if he had just called home. What happened was I got sick of just about everything. You know, just family constantly on your back, uh, just not finding a job and the pressure built up and I said, stuff it, I'm going to take the bull by the horns and just get out of Broken Hill, basically. And without telling anybody, that's exactly what he did. Hitched a ride out of town, leaving his family behind to start a new life 300 kilometres south on a fruit farm. I got the job here and then settled down. And about three days later, you know, it was like the world opened, basically. <laughs> and I saw it in a different view. And it was quite a shock. It really was. But for David, there was an even bigger shock to come. Back in Batlow, Neve May's parents have returned from the forest to attend a police briefing for the third search for their daughter in four years. I'm just hoping to locate something that may indicate the whereabouts of Neem or the circumstances surrounding her disappearance. This new search for Neve's possessions left behind by her killer is based on recent evidence that links Neve's disappearance to a new area of bush. The whole investigation came to a standstill. It, it went through a review process. Little bits of information that we received throughout the investigation. People that have found clothing, people that saw items of clothing some time ago. And as a result of that review process, the analyst had um, identified the Green Hill State Forest area as an area that should be searched. If we find anything, what we're looking for today is property, is a big thing. There was a few, there's a picture floating around. Leah had a backpack, a number of bags, suitcases and shopping bags, which the analysts believe are all together. Anything you do find, don't touch it, don't move it. Neve's parents have had to come to terms with the reality that if they do find their daughter's possessions out here, they might also find her grave. Apparently mm. it's common for people yeah. who've committed a crime of this nature not to be caught in a situation where they can be blamed. So they get rid of the evidence um, fairly quickly. And if that means a person and their possessions, generally they get rid of them both at the same time. And then they can claim that I don't know anything. But with four seasons of growth covering the forest floor since Neve disappeared, finding any clues in here is no easy task. Back on the farm, David is about to be dealt a devastating blow, that he may be the cause of his mum's death. Bit of a shock finding out my mother has died as well. She'd be the first one to tell me to don't look back, go on your life. 
the only factor I think that's going to be in, sticking in my mind that it's, I might have I mean, been the cause of my mother's death. So, and like I said, that's a feeling I've got to work out later. So, who knows? I like this job. It's quiet and uh, it soothes you in a way. David may have been lost, but it seems somewhere in all this fuss, he's found himself. I just want to be left alone and, like I said, see what the world's like for myself. It's a great result. Um, it's fantastic to see David looking so well and he's certainly happy here. Um, the, our media strategy was, was worked at the end and uh, the fact that David was missing uh, came up uh, through the newspapers uh, around this area. Um, communication's a big factor in this, in this case, as is in, in a number of uh, missing persons matters and uh, all missing people are reported by loved ones and uh, com better communication. It only takes a phone call and uh, minds can be put at ease. But, uh, a great result that uh, we're extremely happy with. Back at the missing persons unit, Mandy is hard at work on the new case of missing 55-year-old Penrith man, Kevin O'Connor. I've had a phone call this morning from a sister in Ballina. The immediate worry is that Kevin, a father of two, is seriously unwell. The family's quite concerned. He's on medication. Well, he hadn't been really very well. You know, like he... Um, was sort of having a few problems and, you know, we did ring the nurse to come and see him and we sort of thought that he needed to go to hospital for a bit of a rest and, you know, ha have a, um, be assessed and, you know, maybe have his medication changed. So we were worried about him. His health is Mandy's biggest concern, especially given that Kevin has been missing for over a week without his medicine. Um, the police have local contacted local hospitals. There's no one sort of comes under his description that's been admitted. So, yeah, so we're concerned. It's now time to sort of start looking at the surrounding area of where he's gone missing. There is bushland around, not far from the Nepean River. So that's exactly where Mandy heads, to join an urgent police search for Kevin along the Nepean River near his home. Back in Batlow, with the search well underway, Neve's brother Kieran recalls crucial information that supports the theory that this is the area where Neve spent her last hours alive. Went to the pub and uh, the barmaids there gave pretty good descriptions of the people she was hanging out with. That afternoon I was able to piece together. She was last seen in a black hearse. They don't know the name of the guys, but um, they think they went camping driver of the hearse, the man who took Neve camping, and the last person to see her alive is 32-year-old Jack Nicholson. And this is the very campsite where Jack Nicholson told Neve's brother Kieran that he took Neve. That's probably the time when I first realised that she was in serious trouble, you know. These photos police found in Nicholson's hearse were taken at the campsite just before Neve disappeared. And the campsite is only a stone's throw from where police are searching today. You could drive there from here uh, in 10 to 15 minutes. No one's gonna see you. And then you can do what you like. Neve has been taken, willingly or unwillingly, with that vehicle wherever it went. Down on the banks of the Nepean River, police are planning their search for 55-year-old Kevin O'Connor. This is the gentleman we're going to be looking for. So we're five days, six days into it now. We believe he's left without shoes, possibly wearing shorts and a blue T-shirt. He was worried that he had to go to the doctor the next day and he was worried they would put him into hospital and he was worried about the drugs that they give him and um, 
you know, because they make him feel sick and um, give him bad headaches, you know. So that I think that's what triggered it off. Maybe one of the things anyway, you know. Mandy knows that time is running out. Her hunch is that because Kevin loves water and rowing, he may have gone down to the river. So we're going to put a volunteer rescue association boat and crew into the river. Her great fear is that without his medicine, Kevin may have become disoriented, fallen into the river and drowned. No shoes, no money, no property on him. So yeah, it's a bit of a concern. Back on the outskirts of Batlow, Neve's brother Kieran recalls even more evidence that links this new search area to the disappearance of his sister. I managed to speak with Jack on the phone at Tumut when I got mobile reception, and that's when he told me a story about dropping her off on the go-cut road to hitchhike to Kootamundra. The road where Jack Nicholson claims he dropped Neve directly links the campsite to where she was last seen alive to the very site police are searching today. I just felt sick in the stomach talking to this guy and knowing that he was telling me this. Yeah, the story just didn't ring right. When police questioned Nicholson, they knew Neve had already bought a ticket home. So his story that he dropped her off because she wanted to hitch a ride didn't stack up. But anyway, we had nothing else to go on. So we conducted a search of the go-cup road. Um, we used the police air wing, uh, dog squad, trial bikes. That failed to turn anything up which would um, link us to Neem and her disappearance. So police had no option but to let Nicholson go. Six months after Neem's disappearance, we were probably in our best position, I think, to, to drag him back in and question him further. And um, sadly, though, he uh, was arrested in Brisbane, Queensland, for a very violent crime against a 19-year-old girl. And whilst in police custody in, in Brisbane, he jumped from a three-storey car park to his death. We knew that he was the only person that realistically could tell us what happened. And when I found out he'd um, killed himself, I was just so angry, I couldn't believe it. I was so frustrated. That's, um, you know, that was our best chance of knowing what had happened. Oh, it was terrible, you know? I, not because he died so much, it's because, um, our real link to the disappearance of Neam is gone. Back on the Nepean River, police are well into their search for missing dad, Kevin O'Connor. There's access behind all this bush, yes, access. all the way along. The crew will be walking behind there, Mandy, and what we can't, we'll look up into it. We can't see right through it, but they can actually look down into it and they can see us moving along the river. As the boat continues east along the bank, volunteer John Buckman fears the worst. People do come down here and ways of ending their life, unfortunately. But if Kevin has fallen into these freezing waters, might have got into a tree and got stuck. There's not much hope of finding him alive. In Batlow, after 10 hours of searching the forest near the campsite where Neve was last seen alive, volunteers again return empty-handed. For Neve's family, it's been another agonising day in their four-year search for their daughter. You know, you always hold out hope and you really want to hope that something's going to come of it, but at the same time you know that, um, that there may not be any luck. This is the third search, so... And despite yet another day of heartbreak, Neve's mum somehow finds the strength to be positive. And we are so grateful that you've done it. Even though we haven't found anything, we've achieved something, because for us and for you, it's covering in a little bit more of that map in the hope that eventually something will come up. But as the searchers leave,
police have to face the brutal reality that Neve may never be found. We'd be asking the coroner to, uh, to make a determination one way or the other. Is Neve May missing or is she deceased? I'm hopeful that we will find her. Mm. But I don't necessarily... I'm patient. I'm a really patient person, so I'm prepared to wait decades. If anyone remembers seeing Neve or Neve with Jack in the Batlow tumid areas in March or April 2002, please contact Crime Stoppers on 1800 333 000. Uh, the smallest uh, piece of information uh, could be the piece we need. Meanwhile, in Penrith, local detectives are now going door to door near where 54-year-old Kevin lives. Is that the person we're talking about? That's him? OK. Do you remember the last time you actually seen him at all? It might have been maybe a month after Christmas. We've seen him once walk up. Um, and then, like, he used to go back about lunchtime. Um, but I haven't seen him since, but the people across the road he used to stop and say hello to them all the time. Okay. Do you know a um, person who lives in number 55, Papala House or something? Not personally, but I've said hello and yeah. seen them. Yeah, when's the last time you actually saw the... I couldn't tell you the last time I saw him. He used to walk up and down the street twice a day and hasn't been for a long time. So that's exactly what the police continue to do. Walk up and down the street yeah, really searching, nice. house by house. I'll start down the very end house. Yeah. Out on the river, the news isn't much better. There's still no sign of Kevin. Uh, Peter, just advising, we've uh, reached the top of the river now. We've turned around and we're uh, headed back down on the river. As light fades, the boat turns for one final swim. Mandy's best hope now is that Kevin has just wandered off into a neighbouring suburb and become lost. We're certainly concerned at this stage. He's left without his medication. Um, we believe he hadn't eaten for a week up to the time that he went missing. His bank accounts haven't been accessed. Um, certainly leaving with um, no shoes, shorts and a T-shirt, you would hope he would come under notice with the public, maybe behaving in a manner that would cause some concern. Something doesn't definitely sit right, so it's a bit of a worry at this stage. Next week... He, he was actually nearly dead the bizarre conclusion to the disappearance of Kevin O'Connor. And then we heard this little voice in the weakest voice. Karen. And a bushfire unearths a four-year mystery. And we've located some clothing. Is this the answer to one family's prayers? Crime scene unit has actually located some items which we're not allowed to disclose.